This is part B of the Microbiology Unit 7. Our innate immunity is the result of certain physiological processes we have as human beings that are incompatible with those of most plant and animal pathogens. These are traits which are part of being human. For those pathogens which are able to colonize humans, the body has many defense mechanisms. The goal of the first line of defense is to prevent entry and establishment of pathogens. Many of these are nonspecific responses which respond to a wide variety of pathogens. The skin is a physical barrier to the outside world. The Langerhans cells are phagocytic cells in the epidermis, sometimes referred to as epidermal dendritic cells, to target invaders in the superficial layers. The structure of the skin serves as a strong barrier due to the tough collagen fibers and older layers that are continually being replaced. Antimicrobial peptides are produced in perspiration from the sweat glands and sebum from the sebaceous glands. This includes lysozyme, which destroys the cell walls of bacteria by cleaving the sugar subunits. Sebum contains fatty acids, which lower the pH of the skin to about pH of 5, inhibiting many bacteria. The mucosa are less efficient of a barrier to the skin. Stem cells continually replace shedding cells which carry microbes away. The cells are tightly packed as a barrier. Goblet cells produce a sticky mucus to trap bacteria and pathogens. Ciliated columnar epithelial cells carry mucus up and out of the body. The nasal mucosa contains antimicrobial and the peptide lysozyme. The normal flora compete with the potential pathogens with microbial antagonism. They can change the pH and secrete substances to limit growth. The lacrimal apparatus produces tears to assist with blinking and manually clearing the eyes, as well as containing lysozyme. There are many other secretions which will assist in blocking microbial invasion, such as stomach acid and saliva with lysozyme, and its washing action on the teeth. The second line of defense comes into action when invaders survive the first line of defense. The majority, majority of these are found in the plasma and blood cells. The plasma is the liquid component of the blood. Serum is the plasma with clotting factors removed. There are a few important proteins in the plasma for our immune protection. Transferrin binds iron in the blood for transport, making it unavailable for microbial use. Complement is a plasma protein that acts as a chemostatic attractant and triggers inflammation to enhance the immune response. Antibodies and immunoglobulins are antigen binding materials produced by the plasma cells. There are many types of blood cell defenses. The formed elements include the cells and cell fragments in the plasma. The formation of formed elements is hematopoiesis, or sometimes just referred to as hemopoiesis. The erythrocytes or red blood cells carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. Platelets are made from membrane fragments of megakaryocytes and are involved in the clotting process. The leukocytes are the white blood cells which are involved in protection from invaders. When we look at the white blood cells, the granulocytes are white blood cells which have granules in the cytoplasm. The basophil will stain blue and release histamine. The eosinophil will stain red and do phagocytosis. Eosinophils can go into the tissues and are active in parasitic worm infections and allergies. Neutrophils or PMN stain purple. They are also able to go into the tissue and are phagocytic cells. In diapedesis, the cells can exit the bloodstream by squeezing between cells lining capillaries and can attack microbes in the tissue. The agranulocytes include the lymphocytes and monocytes. The lymphocytes are the smallest white blood cell and provide specific immunity as B and T cells. The monocytes are the largest of the white blood cells. They leave the blood and mature as phagocytic macrophages. The macrophages engulf bacteria, fungi spores, 
dust, dead cells, and other immune debris. Wandering macrophages exit the blood via diapedesis to scavenge through the body. Fixed macrophages are found in the lungs, as in the microglia in the CNS, and Kupfer cells in the liver. The mononuclear phagocytic system, or reticuloendothelial system, abbreviated as the RE system, is composed of macrophages and monocytes attached to endothelial cells. A differential white blood cell count looks at the proportions of leukocytes in the body and can be used as an indicator of disease. Phagocytosis is the main defense against intracellular invaders. Most leukocytes or their derivatives are capable of phagocytosis. Immune cells migrate to an area of infection through chemotaxis. Chemotaxis is the movement of a cell towards or away from a chemical stimulus such as microbial wastes. Damaged tissue and chemostatic factors like complement or cytokines are released from other leukocytes. Adherence is the binding of complementary chemicals on cell membranes and is a way for the chemicals to direct cell behavior. Microbes, which are coated with antimicrobial proteins of complement or antibodies, are opsonized, which will enhance phagocytosis. Phagocytes extend pseudopodia around a microbe and internalize it into a phagosome. This happens during ingestion. Exocytosis is the reverse process of phagocytosis and is used to eliminate undigested remnants of microbes and other materials. We have a variety of extracellular defenses available. In the case of parasitic worms, the eosinophil attaches to the surface and secretes toxins onto the surface to weaken or kill the worm. NK cells secrete toxins onto the surface of virally infected cells and neoplasms. Complement is a set of serum proteins that will help enhance the extracellular responses. They will initially act as opsonic opsonins to help phagocytosis and as chemostatic, chemotactic factors. They trigger inflammation and fever, resulting in the lysis of foreign cells. The classical pathway binds antibodies to a foreign antigen to activate the complement. The alternate pathway is activated by the pathogens or their pathogenic products. The complement pathway cannot go uncontrolled. Membrane Bound cell proteins bind and break down complement proteins, interrupting the cascade before the damage is done to the host. Interferon is a set of proteins released by host cells to nonspecifically inhibit viral spread. Interferon is responsible for many symptoms of viral infection. Both alpha and beta interferon are released within hours of infection by virally infected monocytes, macrophages, and sun lymphocytes. Gamma interferon is produced by T lymphocytes and NK cells. It appears later and is stimulated by macrophages and the phagocytic activity of the neutrophils. Alpha and beta interferon bind receptors on neighboring cells, and trigger the production of antiviral proteins, which bind the double-stranded DNA in the viruses. This will inhibit protein synthesis. Interferon is made using recombinant DNA technology and is used therapeutically. Some viruses have a small response, while others will have none at all. Those with chronic granulomatous disease or the inability to produce gamma interferon will usually respond well. The defensins are small peptides which protect against a wide variety of pathogens. They damage cytoplasmic membranes or interfere with the metabolic processes.
Inflammation may be acute or chronic. Acute inflammation usually develops quickly and is short-lived and is typically beneficial. It usually eliminates the condition that precipitated it. Chronic inflammation develops slowly and lasts a long time, causes damage and death to the tissues, resulting in disease. The signs and symptoms include rubor or redness, calor or heat, tumor or edema, dolor or pain, and the loss of functions. These are often remembered using the acronym SHARP. The role of inflammation in immune defenses is to dilate and increase permeability of blood vessels and promote the migration of phagocytes that stimulate tissue repair. All of the activities are geared to bring more chemicals into the area to resolve the problem. The blood vessels play an important role in transporting the cells and the chemicals of the immune response. Histamine causes vasodilation, which results in more blood flow to the area, including more phagocytes, oxygen, and nutrients. Damaged cells also release prostaglandins to increase vascular permeability. The prostaglandins are derived from fats. The omega-6 fatty acids are used to make prostaglandins, promoting clotting and inflammation. The omega-3 fatty acids are used to make prostaglandins to modulate and decrease clotting and inflammation. An imbalance of these fatty acids in the diet can result in overactive or insufficient inflammatory responses. By far, overactive inflammatory responses are seen with the typical American diet. Leukotrienes are another inflammatory chemical released by damaged cells to increase vascular permeability. The mast cells that are present in the connective tissue, they release histamine when they are exposed to complement C3A and C5A. This increases vasodilation and permeability, resulting in edema and puts pressure on the nerve endings. This helps to deliver fibrinogen to form a clot or wall off an area. Clots in the tissue prevent the pathogen and their toxin from spreading. Pus is a fluid containing dead tissue cells and leukocytes in a walled-off area of destruction. An abscess forms to isolate the area of infection. With phagocytic migration, the increase of blood flow delivers monocytes and neutrophils to the site of infection. The leukocytes begin sticking to the walls of the vessels with margination. The tissue repair requires this to deliver extra oxygen and nutrients to the area. Not all sites in the body are repairable, such as the cardiac muscle and the nervous system. Tissue that repairs best in sites with regular cell division that occur and grow rapidly. A fever occurs when the temperature is raised above 37 degrees Celsius. This augments the inflammation. There are unpleasant side effects to a fever since the blood vessels are in the skin and constrict. This causes a chilling sensation as the blood is pulled into the core to be warmed. A fever enhances interferon, phagocytosis, and repair while inhibiting microbial growth. Too high of a temperature denatures proteins, which may also harm the host. Pyrogens are the chemicals that trigger the hypothalamus to raise body temperature. IL-1 is a pyrogen released by the phagocytes that have phagocytized bacteria.